Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to another video. What we're going to be looking at today is the new Virgin Media Superhub 4.0. So I've just signed up to the brand new Virgin Gig 1 service, which gives you one gig off uh, bandwidth, that's download bandwidth, um, and I believe about 50 or 56 meg upload, if I remember correctly. Um, I'll be honest, the biggest uh, factor for me in deciding to upgrade was the upload speed more than the download speed because going from the M350 package that I'm currently on, which gives you about 35, 36 megabytes download on a good day, um, that's generally more than sufficient. The upload is about 3.6 megabytes a second, so it's 36 megabit upload um, on the M350 package. Um, and I do have a lot of devices, I have a lot of security cameras that are uploading continuously um, audio and video to the internet. So it's always nice to have that little bit of extra upload bandwidth available. And I'm also uh, connecting in to my computers a lot from uh, outside. Not so much these days, due thanks to lockdown and thanks to the COVID. Um, but uh, it's always nicer to have that little bit of upload bandwidth. Let's have a quick look at this uh, new Doxis uh, 3.1 modem, that's the Superhub 4. We'll compare it to the old Superhub 3. Um, we'll see how it is compared to, uh, compared to this in size. And what we'll also do is we'll just quickly compare the, the adapters and the power ratings to make sure um, they're the same now. What that means for you is if you're upgrading and you want to know whether or not you can still use the same adapter, you know, you've got some cable management going on, you've got this fixed under a table and you've got these all in cable ties and it's all nice and tidy and you're going to have to rip your nice clean setup apart just to get your new modem in. Or maybe this will answer that question for you as to whether or not you can just unplug this one, unplug this new one uh, straight into the same power cable without faffing too much and then all you've got to do is attach your um, your cable that's coming in from outside uh, to the back you've got your hub there so let's have a quick look at what's in the new box then so we've got a bit of paperwork which we don't need to look at right now and the main event of the evening which is the super hub this reminds me of the walkie-talkie building in london look at the top of that maybe that's due to the shape of the antenna or something i don't know maybe it gives them better signals Hopefully this has better Wi-Fi ranges than the old ones. The old one wasn't too bad, but um, wasn't the greatest either, to be honest. The little flappy thing there, I don't know what the value of that is. Maybe it's just a tag. Doesn't look like it does anything functional. Um, to maintain the broadband performance of your new device, make sure all the, cables connect, uh, all the cable connection points around your home are tight. So that's a bit of advice there. Uh, and then it says to tighten either push firmly or using the spanner provided. So I think there's plastic spanner in the box, which you'll see in a minute. Slide over the back of the connector and turn clockwise. Once done, please remove this sticker. So I'm um, just going to remove it now, to be honest, because I want to see what's inside. And let's have a quick, let's see if we can remove this. It removes nice and easily. Okay, so you can see it's pretty much the same as the old hub there. So if we bring the old one back, Oh, let me take this off completely because that's just going to get very annoying very quickly. So if we bring the old hub back, you can see you've got the same four port hub on there. I'm guessing it's going to be a standard uh, gigabit ethernet sort of hub or switch there. Um, you've got two telephone points, which I'm not using anyway. Um, and then you've got uh, the power port, which unfortunately looks different there. So you can, you can definitely see it looks like it's going to have a different power connector. So if that was one of the questions you were trying to get answered from this video, hopefully that's helped you out. You are going to need to remove all your nice tidy cables just to get this thing in by the looks of it. Um, and just to prove the point, this is the old power port and it does not go in. So uh, let's have a quick look how they are side by side. It's definitely smaller form factor overall. It's a bit wider, but it's a bit shorter. Might sit a bit nicer on the table. It's not going to take up as much space, um, I guess. Uh, really, it's quite a nice footprint it's got there. It's nice and small. Uh, looks nice. I'm guessing this thing here is probably going to be some sort of a light uh, indicator. 
rather than the ones that you had before which was the little thing over here so I don't know if you're going to be able to turn that on or off hopefully it's not on all the time because that might just get a bit annoying and um, but there you have it so the next thing we're going to do is before we go and do some speed tests we're just going to have a quick look at what's in the box we've got off some paperwork with some wi-fi keys there which i'll keep hidden away and then you've got the power supply so let's have a quick look at the new power supply standard uh, power connector there that's just the figure eight power connector i'm sure at least that much can stay in your cable tidy mechanism because that's the same as the old adapter the old adapter had a figure eight cable as well and then the brick so I'm not sure why they couldn't just use the same brick to be honest I'm sure there was a good reason for it let's just compare what you've got in terms of power ratings if you can see them there um, if I can get them both in the camera side by side uh, what we're we looking at there so we've got 12 volt 2.5 amp on the top one here and then on the bottom one 12 volt 3.3 amps so it's a bit higher ampage output on there um, so okay there's a slight difference uh, and the power pin there as you can see is definitely different uh, as we've already seen on the back um, you definitely can't mix and match and that's probably why they've done it it's got a slightly different power rating so they're forcing people to use the new equipment which is great uh, and I think in here somewhere we're also going to find a plastic spanner but for the life of me I can't find it in there um, it's not a problem in any case oh no there it is it's definitely there there's a plastic spanner so you use that to tighten up your uh, cable that goes into the back of the modem so I'm going to go ahead and connect this all up now and then I'll come back and we'll be on my PC and we'll do some speed tests so you get first-hand idea of how fast the gig one service actually uh, is I'll be right back Hi everybody, welcome back. So I've got everything connected up and running. It was a straightforward switch of the modems. Old one was disconnected, new one was connected, powered it on and bam, everything's up and running without any issues. So what I've got here is I've got the task manager view. Um, so we can monitor the network adapter traffic for send and receive traffic. I've got a speed test application running in Windows and I've got the uh, ethernet adapter properties here as well, just so we can monitor from two or three different views the sort of output we're getting from this Virgin Broadband Gig1 service. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run the first speed test and just see how it performs. Uh, first thing we should see is hopefully a low ping test. So 8 millisecond ping is fantastic. And we've got the speed test running now. Um, let's see how close we get to a 1 gig uh, throughput. So anything over 900 is, is automatically great. We can see also on this side, whilst the traffic was going through, we could see the received numbers. Um, and now we're in download mode, so it's doing a download test. So you can see the send traffic is picking up on this side here. So we're averaging 250 and sort of 50, 54 bits per second, which is great. So you're pretty much getting what they advertise you would get. We'll do two or three tests um, just so we can get a good average idea of uh, the throughput for uploads and downloads. So again, on this slide here, if you concentrate on this received number here, uh, 980 megabits per second, it's showing a bit higher on this side than it is on the speed test application. Looking directly here at what the actual uh, network adapter is giving me is probably a bit more of a true picture of what I'm actually getting. Um, I'm unsure of why I'm seeing such a big difference between the two. Maybe it's just the delay in the metrics being presented. Hard to say, really. Now, we'll run one more test. You can see they kind of consistent we're getting around roughly 930 940 download and the upload is sitting at a happy 50 on average um, hopefully the last test will give us roughly the same figures again now whilst that's running hopefully you found this video useful are you in london are you thinking of upgrading to the service please let me know in the comment section below if you are thinking of upgrading and this video has been useful for you in considering the service again please let me know if you like what you've seen leave us a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, it definitely motivates me to make more and more videos um, for a wider viewer base. And you will be notified of any videos that are coming up. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. All the best.